It's a uh, show that grew out of the 50s and early 60s, so it has a kind of beatnik feel to it. It's a, a little abstract, it's uh, poetic, and it's a conventional, and it, there's many conventions, in it, not conventional, but conventions in it that uh, I believe you know, are timeless. Uh, it's good for young people to see what theater was like before, because it's still the same, it's just pieced together a little differently. Well, what would be an example of one of the conventions that you think is particularly... Well, the two fathers doing, you know, their version of, you know, Frank Sinatra and Fred Astaire, or Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire, whoever. You know, it's old vaudeville style, two guys dancing around with hats. Uh, musical theater grew out of, you know, a combination of operetta and vaudeville, burlesque. So there's touches of that in the show. But there's also, you know, timing jokes, jokes that have to be delivered in a certain way. It's also a presentational style, it's not representational, you know, we break the fourth wall immediately. That's uh, very much an expressionistic kind of uh, thing, you know, you know, although we're doing it on a proscenium stage, we talk directly to the audience. So uh, it's a convention that needs to be accepted by the audience and sometimes they have a little bit of difficulty understanding what they're supposed to do. You gave some instructions to us at the beginning uh, of rehearsals about the way that we were that we should think about this play and uh, and I think one of the chief ones and it's in the notes too uh, for you know in the script is that uh, we're, we shouldn't be playing it for laughs though it's a funny script so I wonder how do you reconcile those two things what's well, that about? you know that's an, that's a good point um, you have to pick and choose your battles. I mean, for instance, in many cases, the ingenues in this particular show are so real that I've let some of the jokes fall because I don't want to give them line readings, like this is how you say it to get the joke, because it's real. So, and point of fact, this particular production uh, is not as funny as normal, only because uh, I thought the ingenues were really... Uh, so real, uh, and again, I, I think the problem is also that people don't understand the conventions of the jokes anymore, either, and it's it's a, a little difficult. But uh, it's, a, it's you got to pick and choose. It's you know sometimes you got to deliver the line exactly like it's supposed to be delivered, and sometimes you put it in the context of the believability of the character. You know, it's kind of up to the director to figure that out. This this show has a sort of personal relevance or meaning to you. Uh, I, I, I gather. I have a history that goes back to 1966 with it when I first saw it and heard it when I was a high school student uh, through seven or eight productions that I've produced over the years. It was very personal to me it always. Uh, and it continues to feel real, truthful, tender, and uh, unique. And I believe it's timeless just for the reason that just because it is of an abstract nature you know, I, I think that in another 50 years they'll still be doing fantastics because of the, uh, it's not rooted in any time period. What's been your, uh, the thing you've enjoyed most about directing at this time? Or most memorable, we'll say. Well, you know, I, I think again, the material, you know, just returning to the material again and re-experiencing it and watching the audience I always enjoy that part of it. Anything else that we can add? Would you like to, any other direction you want to go? No. All right. Remember, you must always keep the wall. <laughs> Terrific. I always wondered what that meant. <laughs>this is your first time directing as a musical director of the Fantastics. Yes, it is. And uh, so how does this show make you feel? Well, uh, this is always, this was, uh, Ken knows this too, this is, this is on the short list of shows I always wanted to music direct that I haven't. Um, uh, for several reasons I always liked this show, I was always drawn to it. I like the, the variety in the music. Um, what Ken was talking about, the different styles that it, this show pulls on, you see that represented in the music as well. You see jazz, you see vaudeville, you see quasi-operatic stuff. Um, so I like that. I like the simplicity of it, the timelessness of it. 
Um, that's the stuff that's really appealed to me about it. And what's nice is after, now, I, I knew the show, but I didn't know it super well. You know, I, I was very familiar with it and I liked it. But now getting to work on it and really knowing it now, I like it even more, which was a nice surprise. I didn't know that would happen. So that was nice. Great. And uh, it seems like it's a pretty challenging score. It is one of, yeah, I would say it's probably one of the more challenging um, scores for musicals. It's uh, because you're pretty much on your own. It's really relying on the piano. You know, it's a piano and then you have a harp and percussion, minimal percussion. So it's, um, you know, they want, they want the piano doing a lot of stuff. And you are got to sound like, you know, you got to be an orchestra, basically. What's your favorite song? Oh, that's hard. That's really hard. I mean, I, I like so many for different reasons. I think that Pick They three. Were You, well, They Were You is a beautiful, beautiful duet at the end of the show that I think is really, um, there's something special there. Um, Try to Remember is a good, a good, uh, just a good example of the timelessness of the show. I mean, that's, if you had to pick one song to show the timelessness, I think you might pick that one. Um, and then there's just so much humor in the show too with some of the numbers. It depends on what you pay. It's hilarious, and um, the uh, the father's numbers. I mean, there's so much. I, I, it's hard for me to say. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up listening listing every song now. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, there's I mean there's no there's not one song I don't like or there's not one song I don't enjoy playing or hearing. Anything else you'd like to talk about? No, I just Another I mean point? I feel really fortunate to have you know have done this. I I think it's been. You know, so it's what I wanted. Is when I, mean, I always thought I'd like to do the show is because I want to work with a strong cast, a strong director. Director really knows the show, and um, just get to really, you know, put on. I think be true to the be true to the show itself, and, and um, I've really enjoyed it. So here's Nina crouching down. Nina, what are you going to be doing today? Today. Well, I mean this evening. This evening. I will be in the box making sure everything runs smoothly. I'll be back stage and up stay up in the box making sure everything goes okay. When you're managing the stage, that's me. We know we can count on you to put all the stuff in the right place. <laughs> well, I think. Hopefully. But we'll miss your death scenes. Oh, thanks. I'll miss doing them for you. <laughs> One of the most important things that has to happen at Fantastic. <laughs> Is the living the dream? Living <laughs> the, the sorting of the glitter. As far as the glitter goes, would you say that it's a, a high glitter show? Yes. It's probably one of the higher glitter shows what? in terms of glitter content. I save your ass every goddamn time. Oh, that's on camera now. Although we just pick the squares, we don't really go through all the glitter because it would take a while. But still. That's a lot right there. It's always a little, I'm always a Yeah, oh, that's, that's all the squares. Yeah. Tom's oh, got to bark on, mules got to pray. Soldiers must fight and preachers must pray. And children, I guess, must get their own way the minute that you say no. Why did the kids put beans in their ears? No one can hear with beans in their ears. After a while, the reason appears. They did it, cause we said no. Your daughter brings a young man and says, do you like him, Pa? Just tell her he's a fool and then. You've got a son-in-law. <laughs> You've got a son-in-law. Ha! Sure as the June comes right out. It's a pig. That's why I love vegetables. You know what they're about. Life is very, very vegetarian. A man who plants a garden is a very happy man. Change come up. Plant beans stuck in a bean stuck just the same as Jack. Then if you don't like it, you can always take it back. But if your issue doesn't issue, then I wish you luck. 
or what you planted, children, you're absolutely <laughs> stuck. Every turn of green, every kidney bean. So we begin our tour, here we are, in the old man makeup room. What are you doing here? Fixing the wig. Uh oh, what's wrong with it? It's falling apart. Yes, I have beaten it up. So you are ironing and then applying in this simulated head. You've made me bald and ugly. I thank you. <laughs> What also, else the is a makeup artist for? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Dad's going out as the badger. Hello, Cleveland. Honey badger. The honey badger. Is that what it is? Is that, is that where we go? Honey badger. I'm the, I'm the wood. I'm the woodchuck cooing. Here we go. <laughs> Wooing. Does he woo or does he coo? He does both. It makes the, the former makes the latter more effective. Is uh, old glory. Yes. <laughs> 